Hi all, uh, welcome to Author Speak, an initiative by Books Etc. And who is Books Etc? Uh, it is a literary gift store. How cool is that? Uh, so uh, today I'm going to read to you from my book, Wingless. My name is, of course, this comes inverted and sometimes someone is going to have to discover how to do it so that the words are the correct way around. My name is Paro Anand. I write uh, basically for children and young adults. Um, and I started out uh, writing because I realized that my core strength was that I was a great liar. I told the most fabulous lies. Uh, but... As I went along in my journey as a writer, and that's a whole long story, uh, but as I went along, I realized that there was so much truth to talk about as well. And um, then I've been described as a writer who dares to tell the truth because, yeah, I do write on difficult issues. Now, um, I'm kind of a weird writer because I often write two books at the same time. They run parallelly. The reason for that is that I really inhabit the skin of a character and I live in that parallel universe of the story that I'm writing and sometimes it becomes painful, um, very hard. And um, I also often write two books because I'm so scared of, the, of a writer's block. Uh, if I get a writer's block, I freeze even further. Um, and so what I do is I jump to the other book that I'm working on and I start working on that. And pretty soon in the process of writing that, the first one or the, you know, the other one that I'm writing uh, gets resolved. So while I was writing a book called No Guns at My Son's Funeral, um, a book that has lasted a long time, 15 years this year. And so we've actually reissued it with um, rejacketed cover. But while I was writing that book, it was obviously the title, No Guns at My Son's Funeral, is a hard, it, it tells you about what kind of book it is. Uh, but I knew I needed for the, the sake of my sanity and the sanity of <laughs> my ever patient family that I needed to write another book as well which was lighter and more fun and you know could, could take me to a happier place but I'd also been working with a lot of people and just the subject of special needs of differently able kept coming up and that's a story that I wanted to write now how do you write a story which is on disability but is funny and yet is of course respectful because I didn't want to be disrespectful. How do you, how to get that balance was a challenge and I was very lucky that this book, Wingless, came to me. So I'm going to read to you a little bit. I do have to put on my glasses, I think. Sorry, there will be a reflection. Let me try without the glasses. A princess is born. When Princess Chutki was born to the king and queen of angels, there should have been much rejoicing and happiness. There should have been festivals, feasts, dances, gifts. There should have been a smile on the face of everyone who lived in the silver and diamond land where King Quicksilver and Queen Sparkling Gem ruled justly and wisely, just as any good king and queen should in any good fairy tale. But this isn't a good fairy tale. It's a fairly weird fairy tale. So none of these joyful things happened. No. Musical instruments were broken. Bram! Festivals were banned. Feasts that cooks had been preparing for weeks and weeks were thrown away for kuttas and billies and kawas to feed on. Gifts wrapped and ready for the new princess were hidden away in the darkest corners for spiders to spin their webs on and dust to settle on. 
The smiles on the faces of everyone turn to frowns or even tears. Real watery salty tears. Not the tiny diamonds and pearls that angels weep on the few occasions when angels weep. And those who wept hardest of all were King Quicksilver and Queen Sparkling Gem. They had so hoped for a perfect little baby and you know she was perfect well almost but she wasn't perfect enough what was wrong with her can you guess can you guess of course she was wingless people who came to see her opened their eyes wide with horror as their jaws fell with loud thuds to the floor Some were speechless and hurried wordlessly away. Others could only weep and wash the floor with their tears. And still others had tongues that would not stop wagging. The kingdom of angels is doomed. The end is in sight. We must kill this freakish princess before she kills us. She has brought hell to heaven. She must be punished. She must be killed. The king and queen, so worried, took their little baby up the highest staircase, up to the highest tower, to the highest room, and there they locked the door. As the news spread like wildfire, all the angels gathered. Now, as you know, when somebody is hot angry, when you are hot angry, is it a cool emotion or is it a hot emotion like sweaty hot of course it's hot your face becomes red you coming out of your ears <sighs> right so can you imagine not only you but all your family and everyone in your city and everyone in your country and everyone in your whole world is breaking the lockdown and all gathering in one place, social distancing, be damned. And they're all together shouting in one voice, Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! The king and queen, super worried, decide to call Nanima. And how old is Nanima? I'll have to check because I have no head for numbers. Nanima was called. She couldn't hear at all, you see, being a thousand and three years old. So she hadn't heard the wagging tongues and, and the shouting voices. And what had happened is that all the angels of the land gathered in one, one place, as I said, can you imagine they're all hot angry? Can you imagine the global warming then? Well, it became so hot and so angry. You know that the glaciers are all melting. Well, the road that they were standing on melted. The silver road turned into a silver river. And the angels of the land have fallen inside and they're all splashing about and swimming about and still shouting, shout it with me. Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! And so, I'm not going to read to you more from it because I want you to read it. But I'm going to share one little thing with you, just one little thing, and that is this. The beautiful illustrations of Atanu Roy, who is India's most fabulous illustrator, one of the most fabulous illustrators. So I'm recording this on Baisakhi. Have a fabulous Baisakhi. More soon, I hope. And thank you, Author Speak and Books Etc. for putting this together. Bye.